Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is extremely highly requested. When I asked everybody on TikTok what YouTube videos they wanted to see from me, I would say the most common answer, at least in terms of the math, was definitely trig for the SAT. So you ask and I deliver, of course, because I love you guys very, very much. So today we are gonna be doing SAT trigonometry and I'm so, so super excited. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. All right, so let's begin with question number 12. This is from practice test 10 for your reference in case you wanted to look this up afterwards. So they tell us that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So I had previously recorded a video on similar triangles. I'll link that in the bio if you do wanna check that out. So a really noteworthy feature when it comes to similar triangles is that the angles that occupy the same positions in each of the respective triangles have the same measure. So we can see that A, corresponds with D, and we can see that those are both 90 degree angles. We know that B corresponds with E, so these two right here have the same measure. And then C corresponds with F, so we know that these guys right here also have the same measure. So when they ask us in the question for the cosine of E, what I wanna point out is that's exactly the same thing as the cosine of B, because if these are similar triangles, it means that their sides are proportional, and it also means, again, that these two angles right here that occupy the same position are congruent. So we can just go ahead then and use angle B right here, because we know then that the cosine of E is exactly the same thing as the cosine of B. So let's just go ahead and use this triangle. We already know the sides. So the cosine of B. So you might have learned in school, so ka toa. I feel like that's everybody's favorite thing to say. And the cosine part here refers to the ka part. So when we're talking about cosine, we're talking about the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is the side that is next to the angle. So in this case, 12. So the cosine of B is gonna give us 12, and then the hypotenuse is the longest side, which here is 13. So the cosine of B, like we said, is the same as the cosine of E, which gives us 12 over 13, which is choice B. All right, working our way down. Let's then look at this next question from practice test nine. So they tell us triangle PQR has right angle Q. So let's see how good my triangle drawing skills are. All right, not, not too shabby, not too shabby. So here, let's go ahead and label this so we know the right angle is Q. And it doesn't matter, guys, which one we call P or which one we call R. It really makes no difference. So I'm gonna call this P and this R. Why not? So they tell us that the sine of R, so again, let's refer back to so ka toa. If we're talking about the sine, we're talking about the so part, and the sine is equal to the opposite side of that angle over the hypotenuse. So if we're using angle R as the reference angle, the side opposite angle R is this side right here, PQ, that's equal to four, and the hypotenuse, the longest side, is equal to five. All right, so we got that labeled. They're now asking us for the tan of angle P, so let's do this in red. So now we're using angle P as our angle of reference here, and the tan goes with TOA. So tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right, so the side that's opposite P though, we don't know what that is. We know what the adjacent side is, the side next to it is four. So we know that it's gonna be something over four, but we don't yet know what X is. So there are really two ways to do this. I would definitely recommend memorizing the fact that a three, four, five right triangle is a thing, that that's a Pythagorean triple. Definitely commit that to memory because the SAT loves to use this pairing of sides. Also, I'd memorize, this is not part of the question, but just another Pythagorean triple, five, 12, 13. So these you should have committed to memory. So memorize these guys right here. So that would tell us then that X is equal to three. 
Or if you didn't have that memorized, you could always actually do the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And c refers to the hypotenuse, a and b refer to the other leg. So we wouldn't know what this is. So that'd be x squared plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared. x squared plus 16 is equal to 25. Subtract 16. We get x squared is equal to 9. And we get that x is equal to 3 in this case because, of course, you can't have a negative side of a triangle. So now we know that x is equal to 3, so that gives us 3 over 4 as our final answer for the tan of p. Whoa! All right, so now let's check out this question from practice test 4. So they tell us that the sine of x is 0.6. So I'm really more of a decimal girl in general, but when it comes to dealing with trig, we always like to have things in fractions, and you'll see why in a second. So 0.6 as a decimal can be written as a fraction as 3 over 5. So what that means then is that the sine of x is 3 over 5. And as we've been talking about in SOHCAHTOA, we know that the sine function relates the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and label those two accordingly here. So the opposite side is 3, and then the hypotenuse is 5. So they ask us now, what is the cosine of y? So the cosine the ka part right here, we know that the cosine is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which in this case, we can just see that the adjacent side right here is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5, so the cosine of y is just equal to 3 over 5. All right, so this one looks a little bit wordy. I mean, it doesn't look, it is a little bit wordy in fact, but let's go ahead and draw two triangles because I see that in the question they're talking about triangle ABC and triangle DEF and we know that they are similar triangles. So let me just go ahead and draw two triangles. Again, really putting my artistic skills to the test here. So here are two beautiful right triangles. So let's see, so this will be so angle B is 90 degrees, so this has got to be B. Let's go ahead. It doesn't matter what we call A and C. And it matters that we keep the order intact. So we know that B corresponds with E, so the right angle has got to be E. We know that A goes with D, so we've got to put D in the same position as A over here. And then we know that C goes with F, so we've got to put F over here. And we know that each side of triangle DEF is one third the length of the corresponding side of triangle ABC. What is the value of sine F? All right, so we want sine F. Let's go ahead and label the sides though. Here we have BC is equal to 16 and AC is equal to 20. So again, these are similar triangles. So what that means then is that the sine of F in this case, so the sine of F is exactly the same thing as the sine of C. Because again, these angles right here occupy the same position, so therefore they will have a proportion that's the same whenever we figure out the opposite and the hypotenuse, and the angles are congruent in measure. So we need the sine. So the sine, as we've been talking about in SOHCAHTOA, the sine is the opposite, opposite over the hypotenuse. All right, so we don't have the opposite side right now. Let's just call that x. We do have the hypotenuse, which we know is 20. All right, so what we know again, guys, we've been talking about three, four, five right triangles quite a lot today. If you could see how often they really do bring them up. So definitely something we should have committed to memory. So a three, four, five right triangle is the exact same thing as a six, eight, 10 right triangle which is the exact same thing as a 12, 16, 20 right triangle, because this 6, 8, 10 is just the 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 2, and the 12, 16, 20 is just the 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 3. So what that means then is that we know that side x here is going to be equal to 12, so we know then that in the numerator here we're putting 12. So 12 over 20, we can just go ahead and reduce that to end up being 3 over 5 as our final answer. 
All right, so now we're doing question number 26, which is supposed to be a hard question as indicated by the number, but because we are SAT trig masters, it's not gonna be a problem for us. The SAT ain't got nothing on us, of course. So they're asking for which of the following is equal to B over A. So again, let's revert back to so ka toa. So we know that in the sine function, we're talking about the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And with the tan function, I'm just talking about these because that's in the answer choices. The tan is the opposite over the adjacent. Well, they're asking us for which of the following is equal to B over A. And what I want to point out is that B and A are both the legs of the triangle. There's no part that's involved with the hypotenuse right over here, AB. So automatically, it can't be choices A or B, sine A or sine B, because to use the sine function, we need to involve the hypotenuse, and neither little A nor little B, those sides, have the hypotenuse. So A and B have got to go automatically. So let's then check out choice C. So C is saying tan of A. So the tangent of A, let's go ahead and try this one. We're going to try this one in pink. So the tangent of A is the opposite, which would be little a. So let's write this down. The tangent of A would be little a over b, because the opposite is little a, and then the adjacent next to is little b. So that wouldn't work. So we know automatically it's got to be tan of b, and let's talk about why that'd be the case. So tan of b, we're going to do this in purple. The opposite side is going to be little b, so let's just write that tan of b. The opposite is going to be little b, and then the adjacent next to is going to be little a, so that's why it has to then be choice d. One last thing before we go. So you definitely need to have it memorized that the sine of x is equal to the cosine of 90 minus x, and that the cosine of x, similarly, is equal to the sine of 90 minus x. So I want to actually explain why that's the case, because I think that will really aid in you memorizing and understanding why this is true. So I drew a right triangle right here, and we know that this is obviously going to be 90 degrees because it's a right angle. So we know that a triangle in total has 180 degrees. So this angle here and this angle here have to sum to another 90 degrees. So let's call this angle X. So what that would mean then is that this remaining angle over here in the bottom corner has got to be equal to 90 minus X. So let's just say that, I don't know, the sine of X is equal to three over five. So that means that the opposite side corresponds with three and the hypotenuse corresponds with five. So this would be, let's do this in a different color. This then would be three because it's opposite the X and then the hypotenuse, the longest side would be five. But what I want to point out though, is that when we take the cosine of this angle right here, 90 minus X, so again, the cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the same side that's going to be opposite angle X is going to be adjacent to the 90 minus X. So that's exactly why the sine of X is equal to the cosine of 90 minus X. All right, so for a question like 25, this is really easy now that we know that fact. They say if sine of x equals a, which of the following must be true for all values of x? Well, we know then that the cosine of 90 minus x must also be a, given this property that we have right here. So that gives us choice C. And then for a question like number 19, which would normally take a pretty long time if you don't know this, they tell you that the sine of x is equal to 4 over 5. So what's the cosine of 90 minus x? Well, the cosine of 90 minus x is the same thing as the sine of x. So it's literally just equal to 4 over 5 with literally no work involved. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope that you are now a master of SAT trigonometry. So if you enjoyed today's video, guys, please make sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and drop any very positive, of course, and supportive comments for your girl, Jackie, here. And also, guys, make sure to follow me on TikTok. The handle is Test Prep Tips. I'm going to drop it right here. Thanks again, guys. Take care. Have a good one.